My name is Andrew Sakowitz, and I'm with my colleague Evan Mosby. Uh, today we will uh, present uh, about ArcGIS Monitor. Our agenda, we, we quickly start with motivation and audience. Who is it for? Uh, some use cases, um, very briefly about installation and configurations, what are the key steps. Uh, we'll follow by um, discussing the key features, uh, including alerts, availability, usage, performance, uh, and root cause analysis, why this is an effective way to diagnose the um, performance uh, problems with um, our system. Uh, and we'll close our presentations with um, a road ahead, uh, what's coming in 2020, uh, which will be covered mainly by, by my colleague Evan. Evan, uh, why don't you tell us about uh, why, how ArcGIS Monitor can be helpful? Sure. So when we think about the ArcGIS Enterprise environment today, we understand that it is growing in complexity. What once was maybe an ArcGIS server site has now grown to encompass many roles and dozens of applications and many pieces of software. And so it is growing in complexity. And uh, as an administrator, oftentimes it's very important to understand exactly what's going on within the environment. Um, understanding that is really a composition of many discrete metrics and components, both software and hardware. Um, it can be very difficult with traditional monitoring software to filter the signal from the noise, as it were. What is important? And so this is the inception of ArcGIS Monitor. If we begin to look at, you know, pragmatically what the growing complexity is, um, you might have several web adapters here. Uh, there's a portal here, there's a hosting server, there's a relational data store. We might add to that later with a federated server and a relational database. And then we might add another role, a geo event server, spatio-temporal data store. And then you might have thick clients too. On top of that, you might be spread across the globe between say Denver, London, Tokyo in this case. And this is where ArcGIS Monitor comes in. This is a very complicated environment as you can see. Um, but it's tailored for ArcGIS. It's able to integrate natively with your traditional enterprise ArcGIS software, pull the appropriate metrics, and it can even do global uh, monitoring across each of your sites, whether or not they're within the same continent or across the globe. If we look at um, some of the key features that Monitor presents, it's not just about pulling metrics per se, but it's really about providing high-level aggregation. So as an administrator, you can be upfront and proactive in your, in your um, operations. Um, ArcGIS Monitor takes the discrete low-level metrics that we've kind of been mentioning, such as response time, busy time, throughput on your services, or your very low-level hardware like CPU, memory disk, and it aggregates that into three big categories. We like to categorize ArcGIS um, Enterprise ArcGIS in terms of its health, in terms of its performance, and in terms of its usage. These are the three big categories that really help administrators quantify and qualify how their ArcGIS is behaving. So Evan, uh, it, it might be uh, helpful to mention that, that these categories actually apply to different tiers. So we can have a health category at the software level and services and, and hardware. Am That's I, true. Okay. Absolutely. So, you know, when, when we're thinking about uh, ArcGIS Monitor and designing and, uh, you know, presenting, we always strive to simplify that because you see on the right side, there's just many, many counters, many names. Uh, and uh, for non-expert, it might be difficult to navigate. So what we recommend is that when, when you look at the counters, when you're looking at any type of information, always, always try to identify is this part of the health, performance, or usage? And then to which tier it belongs to? Is it at the hardware level or services level? And later we'll give you more tips, you know, how, how can I distinguish, for example, a performance counter? Uh, uh, so the quick answer is, you know, usually the units would be seconds or milliseconds. Mm. So a little bit more on that. 
Um, so as a segue to, you know, what is the most effective uh, way to use ArcGIS Monitor? It starts with uh, installation, which is a, very straightforward. So most users don't have issues with uh, installing that. But there are some options that you will uh, have. For example, should you install everything on one machine? And the answer is yes. Always start with one machine. Uh, if, we, if there are a situation that we need multiple machines, then only then we will go into distributed. So as you see on this diagram, uh, relatively small machine with four CPUs, eight gigs, 50 gigs of disk, it's a good starting point. And another takeaway from the slide is that we always monitor from a remote machine that it's not part of our production system. Uh, some users have asked, hey, can I install ArcGIS Monitor and ArcGIS Server because I don't have additional machine? Well, technically it is feasible, but we certainly do not advise to do that. Uh, because you might be competing for the resources. Uh, you know, with new releases, we're introducing different ports. So really, uh, it's not a good idea to mix these two things. Uh, totally agreed. Uh, to boot, every CPU cycle, megabyte or gigabyte of RAM should be completely maximized towards your GIS. That's right, yes. So, you know, that's that's what we're calling uh, non-intrusive uh, and agent-less monitoring. Um, there are other tools on the market that uh, they rely on agents that are running on each machine. Uh, uh, the the pros of that is that that uh, helps us with a lot of security challenges, but the downside of that is that these agents must be you know, consuming some resources. And depending how frequent we collect, this could be up to one CPU. So uh, to keep it simple, um, provision machine with four core, install everything, and then uh, monitor from this machine your um, environment. Um, now, there might be valid cases. For example, like Evan showed, when you have a global distribution and you might have a network uh, latency where it might make sense for us to separate uh, the server, which is you know, on the right side, from the collector or the, or the agent on the left side. Uh, they could be that uh, a server is running in the in in the cloud, maybe public cloud that, that we want to make it available to uh, to the public. But the left side is our on premises and secured. So we would have to split these two components for the security reason. How do we approach configuration? So we install the ArcGIS monitor, and what is the next step? And the next step should not be to open ArcGIS monitor and discover the UI and start adding the counters. The next step should be understand our environment. So pull out the architecture diagram, see what software, what components, location try to study that so that will be a good input for us to, uh, to know what to configure. Um, some users might enjoy uh, you know, just uh, learning more by watching the tutorials and videos. Um, I feel I, we, we get the feedback that our UI configuration is relatively intuitive, but in some cases, maybe you would like to have additional uh, tutorials. So go to the gallery and there's a list of uh, tutorials and videos. Another important uh, uh, aspect of configuration is this, this concept of extensions. And extensions are not something the user should consider as optional or additional. Uh, they might be critical to your uh, environment. For example, extension for monitoring SQL Server uh, or Oracle uh, or maybe ArcSoc Optimizer or License. 
Um, so these extensions are very important. The, the reason they're, they're in this version they're not part of the core product is because they, they, they're being developed on a different um, uh, development life cycle. So we, we make them available uh, uh, through the gallery. Evan, how is it going to be in the next release? So the, the extensions as they stand today have been a really good proving ground to ascertain what features are important in the future. Mm -hmm. And so about three or four, and I think some of them you'll talk about in a few minutes here, um, are, are extremely popular and have been have proven to be extremely beneficial for keeping an eye on your ArcGIS environment. In the future, uh, these particular features that are today available through extensions will be integrated natively into the software. Okay. And so that's part of the 2020 upcoming feature set okay. um, for so, this year. So you, you, will, you will speak about this more at the end. Yeah, extensions okay. aren't going away either if we're still talking about the future, mm -hmm. but a lot of these core features that have actually largely been built by um, Esri analysts mm -hmm. uh, will just be brought in natively. Okay. Um, also today, you know, you user, uh, users can build their own extensions as well. So that's, that's uh, uh, how we can extend the ArcGIS monitor. Uh, to give you a better sense of uh, what these extensions are, what, how can they enhance ArcGIS monitor core? For example, uh, LMUtil license inventory. You know, this extension would give you the uh, list of software and number of licenses for each. So in that case, we have uh, 1,600 uh, desktop licenses. Um, it can also tell you how many users are using this extension for given time period. So this report shows you that today, uh, for one day, there were uh, five ArcGIS desktop for uh, aviation charting. Um, I, we can drill uh, deeper than that and even get the list of uh, user names um, for each uh, time span. Uh, in my slide, it's on the right side, this whited out for uh, for the security reasons. All of it can be expressed in a, you know, a time series chart. So there will be percent of a uh, license used. And if, um, if it's 100%, then uh, all licenses are used that you might consider uh, adding more licenses or manage the usage. Uh, another popular extension is ArcSoc Optimizer. It helps, it analyzes the past information, for example, for past month or a day, and sets the min and max instances of services. This extension is specifically helpful to those of you who have, who manage more than hundreds of, of services, that they have a very um, uh, uh, different usage pattern and these some services are very hot that they need extra instances and maybe next week they they're not in high demand so we can uh, free up this memory and that's what ArcSoc Optimizer does it just crawls the data every day and sets these min and max instances appropriately um, keeping in mind the memory and CPU um, availability constraints. So it will not increase beyond your, uh, your, your RAM or even number of CPUs. All of it can be configured. So uh, we're, we're wrapping up the, the section of configuration. You know, how, how do we configure? And then when you have this running, remember, and Evan mentioned that one of the key feature of ArcGIS Monitor is health of the system. And we kind of measure the health of the system using alerts. So uh, you, you're probably expecting that, 
you know, as part of the configuration, we're setting up the thresholds and we exceed the thresholds, the alerts are fired. And if they do, it will look something like this. Uh, there will be list of alerts for, uh, for today and you can drill down into uh, more uh, details, including logs. If this is a URL, maybe web, you, you know which URL. If you're managing multiple ArcGIS server and portals, uh, there's a hyperlink that will take you to the admin URLs. So in a way, it makes this very convenient to quickly navigate uh, to components that have alerted in a given time span. And these alerts are kind of aggregated into one single index we call availability. And most of you are familiar with the concept of availability used in the, in the context of a uptime. So we say, you know, the system is available 99.999. So it's, it's the same concept, but in ArcGIS Monitor, we are leveraging this concept to uh, with the focus on defining the downtime. So if the downtime has critical alerts, we subtract this time as in the equation and um, you know report the availability. So here's some example. You can go through the math, but uh, that should be very uh, intuitive. Um, how these numbers are derived. Why, why do I like this availability? Because the ArcGIS monitor is not just for the admins. It, it should also be a helpful tool for managers. And managers need quick, actionable information. And they need to be able to compare the health of the system between weeks and months. So, you know, sharing with your manager hundreds or thousands of alerts might not be the most effective way to figure out uh, what are the required steps. But, you know, tracking this uh, availability over time, it, it, it's more uh, effective. Plus, uh, you might have uh, literally uh, contractual obligations or uh, SLA, and that could, uh, they could um, give you the information whether you're within or not. It's a very important metric one-stop shop to pretty much ascertain how healthy and how worthwhile your enterprise has been running. That's right. And, you know, uh, some organizations have dozens of solutions. So right now we see only one number, but if we have dozens, uh, then it gets really difficult to uh, assess all the progress Complete uh, you know, of all the uh, solutions. Um, also, uh, you know, ArcGIS Monitor is used for um, kind of um, monitoring as a service where uh, business partners might, uh, or Esri might um, monitor solutions of many customers. So it's a very useful statistics. We're, we're using this uh, for managed services, uh, which is an, a program that uh, we're running and uh, they, they leverage ArcGIS Monitor for that purpose. So, so health, alerts, availability are very important and to uh, administrator. But even if the system is healthy, there are other statistics that are equally important. Uh, which is usage. So what is being used, what is not being used. Now let me give you an example of how we report, how we collect and how we report on the usage. So let's say if we, um, we can report at the load balancer level so then every request coming to the system through the load balancer will be, will be recorded. And that will be one source of usage. For example, number of users or number of IPs or number of requests, you know, at the load balancer. 
And then as we go through the stack, they go through the web servers. If it's good to IAS, we can collect the information there as well, which should be very close to what's reported by the load balancer. And then we're going down in the ArcGIS server. So it, it should be noted that the number of requests at the load balancer most likely will be higher than number of requests at the ArcGIS server because the ArcGIS server is just a subset of that, yes? And then if we have a database below, this is also a subset because maybe that's an enterprise geodatabase, but also you have somewhere file geodatabase. So you see that we need to collect all this information at each tier to get a full picture. And these uh, reports are in the form of charts, tables, map. I will give you an example of that uh, next. So here's an example of a chart. Uh, usage collected at the load balancer and just simply shows the time series of transactions or, re or requests. So how many of these requests are coming to the load balancer? And you see, you know, there's a distribution goes up and down. Um, that particular usage is measured in transactions per interval and we're collecting at uh, every five minutes. So it's how many transactions are processed, came to the load balancer within five minutes. The next important category is performance. So it's kind of related to health, but not necessarily. Why do I say um, that extreme performance degradation probably will be associated with the health and availability. So if you have a very slow performance and things are timing out, users and administrators would not even recognize this as a performance problem. They would recognize this as an outage. But the underlying root cause, it is performance. You fix the performance, you fix the outages. So let's dive in into a few examples how, how we tackle that. Again, uh, the performance can be measured at different tiers, starting at the load balancer, web server, ArcGIS server, portal, database, disk. Uh, you, you, you probably have a sense of um, you know, the picture of the entire uh, stack. This chart shows us uh, response time in seconds at the load balancer. So you see that there is a spike you know, three red dots, and um, and that's very helpful for us, not only to see the, the magnitude of the spike, but also the width of the spike. So if we collecting, uh, in our case, we're collecting every five minutes and there are three dots, then the, the slow performance, you know, happen over a period of 15 minutes, that seems substantial. That seems something that users would notice. Um, but if this was just the one dot and we collect every minute, uh, you know, the spikes happen all the time on the system. So it's good to, to track them and understand. But, uh, you know, maybe a short spike is, it should not trigger the, the action. Um, uh, as in our case. So something happened that should be investigated. Notice the unit seconds. I already mentioned and one way to quickly navigate through the different names is, you know, leveraging units. If you see the unit seconds, that is performance. It's also important to measure the performance at the tiers below. So the first question is, what users are experiencing? And measuring performance uh, at the load balancer is probably the closest. It does not include the network between load balancer and the user, but, but it's still, it captures the entire software stack. But if this performance is slow, the next question would be, well, is it, uh, is it portal? Is it ArcGIS server? Is it database? So, you know, we can look at the ArcGIS server for each service, busy time per transaction, 
and uh, see if these numbers um, can explain the slow performance. Something that might be interesting to note here that as we work our way down the stack, mm -hmm. we're actually getting more metrics, more details. So like we started at the very top in our load balancer and we're able to capture like how many transactions occurred, and how long they particularly took. But moving down into ArcGIS server, we're actually getting that busy time and the response time. And those are those are actually different different metrics. So that's, more, that's right. more details are available as we work our way down the stack, which might be very interesting for performance troubleshooting and outage troubleshooting, as, as you mentioned earlier. That's right. And of course, you know, there will be the performance at the database level. So in a moment, I'm going to talk about the root cause analysis. It's like, how, how what is the most effective troubleshooting uh, approach? Um, so this is a good segue. Uh, the, the, this slide, just going back quickly to the performance, I, I mentioned that we, w our formats are typically uh, charts and tables. And charts are very helpful to understand the, the patterns over time. But if you just want to have a, 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 a summary of, you know, in, in a tabular format over, over a month, um, you know, these are very convenient as well. So, so I hope that by now you have a general understanding of, of what RGS Monitor is, what are the key components, who is the audience, and now let's dive into kind of more advanced usage of that. So if you have an incident what is the root cause analysis? How, how can we go about that? First, let's define what, what the root cause is in analysis. So the root cause, you know, in this slide is this red X, yeah? So it's the, it's the lowest bottom stack that it's responsible for the outage. So on the left side, you know, we have an ArcGIS data store. If ArcGIS data store in our case is not available, then the stack in the lineage above, hosting server and portal responsible of consuming this data store will also show alerts. But, you know, in a way there are the there are the impact, they are the victim of the of the um, of the ArcGIS data store. So when it comes to troubleshooting, the most effective way is to recognize, identify the source and focus troubleshooting on that and table all the other alerts above. Otherwise, um, it, will be, it will be many alerts and not the, the most effective way to address that. This, I think, is where Monitor really begins to shine. So as it's collecting all of these metrics that we've mentioned earlier, this RCA analysis, which is essentially going on in the background, as an administrator, as Andrew mentioned, users are gonna report the front end issues. My map is slow, my application is unresponsive. But really, as an administrator, you need to go behind that, and so this, this is very much, this RCA is very much uh, useful for quick troubleshooting and as we mentioned er earlier, filtering the um, signal from the noise as it were. 50 users might report a slow performance or a map not responding across many applications, all of them which use, say, that single data store back there. That's right. Um, yeah. Um, just to give you a sense of what are the typical uh, cases of, of incident. So by far the most common is overloaded system. Just like with other technology or cars, if there's too much load, this will result in uh, excessive utilization, stability, and performance. 
and that would be captured in our root cause analysis. You see uh, the first column says type and it says source. Uh, and on the right side, there's a um, counter type, so it's ArcGIS. And with our comments says usage spike, check resource utilization and settings. So, which pretty much saying there is more load on the system that it was designed for. The next thing is the bottleneck. Um, as you, you've experienced most likely on freeways when there are not enough toll boots open, you know, that creates a bottleneck. So the bottleneck happens on the left side of, of the toll boot and which is outside of our system. So if you're an administrator and you're looking at the utilization of the system, it will be very low. And it might be misleading to believe that there is no problem on the system because nothing is being utilized. Uh, well, that's just exactly how in the, in the traffic. You see, the, right after the toll booth, it's, it's uh, relatively fewer cars. So it's a little bit harder to identify this, but there are um, typical cases, for example, under-configured instances. So in that case, it shows us that there's not enough free instances. Unstable infrastructure, you know, uh, restarting machines, restarting database, changing permission, maybe on v uh, a VMware over allocation or maybe vMotions. Uh, you know, all these things can impact uh, stability. And yeah, the system will recover, but sometimes, sometimes it will take, uh, you know, a few seconds, sometimes a few minutes, sometimes longer. So. Um, you know, some services that, that when they get restarted and they are very complex, it, it, it might take a minute before they become fully available to the users. So it's just a just simple restart. Uh, users would not know that the service is restarted. They will perceive this as system is not stable. And we keep hearing this, you know, that... Uh, uh, it's very challenging to address the, 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 the feedback, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Lately, you know, it's been working okay. So uh, it's helpful to use ArcGIS Monitor to, 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 to chase these incidents. You know, and again, as another example of how this would be captured uh, with ArcGIS Monitor. So a uh, few cases uh, when ArcGIS services are stopped. Um, when some cases where ArcGIS server machine is rebooted, in, it's especially when there are updates and maybe uh, um, a different department, uh, you know, responsible and uh, reboots the machines and uh, administrator is not notified or not aware of. So on a large system, it's very easy to um, to over, overlook the fact that the machine was just rebooted. Uh, uh, another common case is database is not running. Uh, oftentimes, ArcGIS system server and portal is managed by one department, while a database maybe it's managed by another department or even a different vendor. So, Awareness of the status of the database, it's very helpful for ArcGIS administrators to understand um, the root cause. Well, I am really excited to uh, passing on to Evan to tell us about what's coming in 2020. Sure, thanks, Andrew. Uh, we just wanted to spend the last few minutes of this presentation looking at the future. Um, Let's see, we wanted to play a quick demo here. So one of the more interesting aspects today is uh, that we're looking forward to in the future is this notion of auto-discovery. Auto-discovery um, is essentially a mechanism by which ArcGIS Monitor will detect uh, connected ArcGIS components as you register them. And so the notion here, and as you're seeing in the background, we're registering a single portal and so once we're hooked up to this portal, in the past you've had to register, and Andrew mentioned, you had to really ascertain what 
your environment was before you could configure things for monitoring. We're, ho we're hoping to alleviate a lot of that stress uh, and, and lookups on behalf of the administrator by going about finding that stuff for you. So in this case, we quickly registered a portal and ArcGIS Monitor was able to determine, okay, obviously it's living on a host, and so we're going to go ahead and register that host, but it found that host for us. It determined its fully qualified domain name. And now you can see it's just quickly plugged into it. It also found an ArcGIS server that's been federated with that portal. And as you can imagine, you can have many different things federated and hooked together via portal. In our case, it's already determined the admin URL to that. And so all we really need to do is supply the necessary credentials depending on what kind of security store you've got hooked up and go ahead and register. So it's very, it's very workflow driven and it's taking a lot of the guesswork out. Um, you can see that this is actually chaining together. So once the ArcGIS server has been registered, now we have the host. It's been discovered on an ArcGIS server, which of course makes sense, but we're saving a lot of keystrokes and we're saving a lot of guesswork again here. So we're gonna quickly register this host and there it is. So at this point within just a minute, we were able to register essentially what is a base uh, ArcGIS Enterprise base deployment. And we really didn't have to go look up anything or reference an architecture diagram. We, we mainly just looked at the portal and were able to carry on from there. Uh, we also just wanted to quickly highlight uh, a change in the data model. Uh, so traditionally, ArcGIS Monitor has relied on MongoDB as a NoSQL repository for all the information that is collected. Uh, we're making a change to, to support traditional RDBMSs now. And so our targets in the future are Postgres, SQL Server, and Oracle for support. We feel like a lot of the developers out there are, are very familiar with relational databases. Your geodatabase is traditionally a geodatabase. And so this is just a quick snapshot of some of the schema that ArcGIS Monitor will implement in upcoming releases. Our hope here is that um, not only will developers be more familiar and so you can extract information out of the data model more readily, but also with the data model of being in a relational database, uh, other applications that are business focused like Power BI, uh, as an example, might be able to leverage that information. Uh, another open door that we're making available to developers going into the future is a more robust REST API. So ArcGIS Monitor today does have an, a RESTful API. Um, it, ha it has fairly limited scope. And so something, something that we've been working on, in addition to revitalizing or revamping the data model, is exposing all of this data in very, um, very ArcGIS-centric REST APIs. And so if you're familiar with the ArcGIS REST spec, then you will be very familiar with how the data can be um, queried and searched for uh, in the future. And in point of fact, the future front end for ArcGIS Monitor will leverage this API as well. Some of the really interesting byproducts of going this route is um, having the capability of creating services. And so in the future, ArcGIS Monitor will have standard out-of-the-box services uh, based on configuration parameters. The, they, they won't be editable services, but um, that unlocks the capability of registering them with Portal. Um, on top of that, you can then um, leverage those uh, registered services in operations dashboard or a web app builder. And so very quickly you can see that Monitor is, uh, is a part of enterprise and the data can be pulled out and into traditional uh, dashboarding type applications like operations dashboard. In this case is a very simple dashboard we're showing here, uh, which is just showing memory and CPU from a machine. But um, it is, it is relatively easy to pull this information out. So Evan, uh, will ArcGIS Monitor provide their own out-of-the-box uh, dashboards? To an extent, we recognize there's sort of, uh, sort of a duality when it comes to um, monitoring and representing data. 
ArcGIS Monitor is really trying to be that curated, focused um, experience for an administrator. And so we're trying to apply all the years of experience that we've had in administrating large GIS systems to give the user the most robust way. And so in that, in that vein, there will be in the future uh, features that allow the user to kind of slightly uh, tune their own dashboard. Mm -hmm. But we're, our goal for the UI in the future is not to replicate what essentially is operations dashboard. There is a operations dashboard will most likely be there in your environment and mm -hmm. its whole purpose in life mm -hmm. is to perform dashboarding. Okay. So there's, there's so in other duality. words, users can can customize. You can you if if our if our core uh, standard uh, UI and dashboards uh, don't necessarily fit the, exactly yeah. what you need. Okay. Uh, maybe to represent a management, yeah. or if there's a specific configuration that you have, yes. then there's other opportunities so, there to integrate. So. So I want to highlight this point because this is our call to the the developer community to to please be mindful of opportunities that ArcGIS Monitor will offer you. There will be plenty of demand for uh, custom dashboards, and you know, uh, so um, yeah, we're Absolutely. really looking forward to this feature. Yes, we're very interested to see what folks come up with, not only in Ops Dashboard, but also in custom mm -hmm. JavaScript applications or anything that leverages the REST API. Uh, another feature that we've been working on is unlocking webhooks. Um, so very similar to what ArcGIS Portal has introduced very recently, um, this got us thinking that, gosh, ArcGIS Monitor is overseeing essentially the entire enterprise. And it's looking at things beyond just the ArcGIS software. So with that, we can very quickly event on actions that are occurring within the system and make those available as webhooks to then uh, integrate further down the line with other business systems. We've, we've um, heard users requesting, hey, can I use ArcGIS Monitor to create a, an outage ticket in my ServiceNow system? Or can I use, I'm, I'm running on Azure, can I use ArcGIS Monitor to send into Azure or Microsoft Flow and then maybe um, push a little event to my, my Slack channel or my Teams channel or something like that. And so these, these are opportunities that we'll be making available um, in upcoming releases, releases in 2020. Uh, as a quick demo, um, we just wanted to show you publishing an ArcGIS server service, so this is outside of Portal, and a very simple webhook that shows that event within um, a Microsoft Teams channel. And so we got our good old ArcGIS Monitor demo um, channel here, and so I'm going to publish a very simple service that I've set up. So we'll just go through that process. So out of the box, ArcGIS server doesn't have webhooks, and you would have to sit here and wait and whatnot. But what you can see here is as that service uh, finishes publishing, we'll see on the right that the webhook has actually fired, um, or I should say that event has been picked up and monitor, and a webhook has fired that was configured against this channel. This is, of course, a very simple demo, but, but you can see that was very quick, actually. And indeed, uh, traditional developers would have to do, implement their own long log. I'm sorry, long pulling techniques to get some uh, get this sort of information out of server. But with ArcGIS Monitor, these events are essentially native, and we'll be unlocking features that allow the user to configure them and send them to different receivers uh, and whatnot in the future. So hopefully, this is. Uh, maybe a quick view of things to come and opportunities for developers to engage a little more with ArcGIS Monitor um, uh, in 2020. Yes. And that's, that is all we have, Andrew. Very well. Well, um, as always, we, uh, we look forward to uh, hearing from you. Um, um, we hope to see you at the, the next conference. Um, uh, and Thank you so much. Yes, thank you.